Welcome to this demo on BDD with Tricentis Tosca. Today I'd like to show you a couple of examples on how Tosca supports BDD. Let's have a look at a banking scenario. And here you can see I'm using Notepad Plus as my editor. Our user scenario is for a banking application where I want to create a checking account. Below we can see our scenario in the typical Gherkin syntax. And further down we can see the same example with a scenario outline that includes customer data. In Tosca we have all our user stories synchronized into the requirement section. This allows us to prioritize our user stories, link them to test cases and report on the risk coverage for our BDD project. We can attach our notepad files into Tosca so that we can manage them with our standard versioning and access control. Or better yet, we can create a custom field called Gherkin Editor and use this for our scenarios in the Gherkin syntax. In the test case section, we can set up our BDD libraries, which contain reusable test steps with business parameters to represent our BDD scenarios. These business readable libraries would be the equivalent of the code skeletons generated by other BDD tools. We can then enrich these libraries with Tosca's model-based test automation as soon as you have any GUI or non-GUI interface available. Tosca's business readable automation replaces the scripts and technical skills required to complete those mentioned code skeletons by other tools. Now let's see how we can create automated tests based on the original BDD scenarios in the given when syntax. First, let's start with a simple scenario. In this scenario, we want to create a new checking account. We have a client with the rating AA, the credit rate 2.5, debit rate 5, and the account creation should be successful. So we can utilize our already created BDD libraries over here. If I click on the test case folder, I can start off by creating a new test case by clicking on this button up here. And my new test case is create a new checking account for customer. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to use the GUI library that I've set up over here. So we can drag and drop straight from the library itself over here if we want to, but we've also got this um, fuzzy search over here, which I'd like to use. So clicking on my test case here, I can say add the test step using the search. So if you come over here, you can see already I've got a list of all my libraries that I created and I want to choose the given when library. And you can see there's my business parameter set up from the library previously. I also want to add my when over here and make sure I grab the right one UI. Yep. And lastly, the when then library over here. So I've got given when then. And now all I need to do is complete the business parameters that I've previously set up. So for rating, if I come over here, I want to select rating AA. That was given when the client has the rating AA and they supply the interest rate 2.5 and the debit rate 5. The account creation should be successful. Okay, there's a few empty ones over here and this is just for saving the account number when it's generated. We use the buffer function for that. Um, and entering the ID as well if we want to pull that from another source, your test data. That can all be taken care of as well in advance. But for now, we'll just stick with this from the information we've got from the BDD scenario. So here you can see straight away now we have all the parameters. And again, that would be more like your skeleton code in other tools. And now we can enrich it with our, with our actual automation. So again, this has already been set up. Um, but can, this can be done in different phases where we set up our parameters first with all this information and then when the environment's available we go into those libraries and apply, um, enrich the tests over there with the automation piece. So now if I turn on this little um, view over here, I can click on that. You can see straight away my automation has now appeared um, and this can come as a second step of course and you can see now credit rating AA has now been parameterized to be used as an input in my test. So we've set up that in advance, but now it's used as an input in my test. And you can see the um, parameter that we've set up over here is being pulled from that value over there. Same for the client ID, if I had entered one up there, and if I scroll down to the bottom and look at all my other pieces of my automation, 
you can see there's some parameter set up over there pulled into the test and of course verifying that the test case is successful and I'll just expand the last one there so we can have a look um, we also have another view over here where you can turn off the actual links to the parameters so if I click on that you can see what will the actual test case look like um, and now you can see it hides all the parameters and you can see the actual inputs being fed in from the business parameters okay so now we have a fully automated test case using the given when syntax from the beginning and we later enriched to put the automation piece and that's for a GUI test of course if I move that across a bit here you can see we have the execution section I can open that up and if I click over here we have all our test cases that can actually run as well in execution lists which give us that risk-based reporting back to our original BDD scenarios so that was the UI one I can do the same for API if I want to come over here I can quickly come back to my test case and say let's create a new scenario but this time we're going to use the non GUI libraries so it will be the API one in this case so I can copy the text from the first one oops bring that back over there paste that there but let's say this time we're going to use web services because in this case let's say that the web services are were actually available and of course this can be done before the UI but in my case, I'm just doing it the other way around just so I could show you the UI to begin with. Um, but we'll select that over there, add again, and this time let's say given from the API library, make sure I grab my test case again, and say when. And the last one we want to add is the then. And just like we had for the UI test, we now have the API um, parameters from our little reusable test step libraries that we'd set up. Um, and if I open it up, they're exactly the same business parameters we had before with the same information in them. The only thing that's different now is the automation piece. The automation will now be um, based on the APIs and not the UI. So if I just double click on my test to bring it in view so it's the only one we're looking at, we can again go through and fill in the same information. So if I stick with the same scenario and say AA, open that up, let's open the next one up and use the same customer information 2.5. We'll stick with the five and last one for the then is the customer creation should again reset it should be successful and this time I will type it in because I hadn't set up my value range but you can see it doesn't really matter from that point either way will work so we have the successful over there and now again if we open up all our automation folders in this case we're going to see um, web services requests and responses in this case for a SOAP HTTP web service and again, if I come over here and you can see straight away that my parameters were automatically pulled into my test and that's because that little function was already turned on. If I turn it off, you can see exactly where these fields are pulling the information from. But just like the UI side, the APIs do the exact same thing. We have the requests and the responses and we should have a successful message coming back. And you can see, of course, we can parameterize them as well and pull that information in from the business parameters. So that's for the UI side as well. Sorry, UI and API, we can do both. And that's how it works across all technologies, all UI based, all API based from that side. Um, last one I wanted to show you, and that's a question we've had a few times, is what about if we want to enrich these, um, give these BDD scenarios with different methods um, from a development point of view? And yes, we can do that as well. In Tosca, we also have, we do support Selenium. So we also have out of the box modules that allows us to call Selenium scripts as well as N unit and J unit scripts. So what I've done is set up a similar one over here. And if I click on my library, you're going to see a similar thing. Same parameters, just like the others. But this time, we've actually got a module that's um, available as soon as you open, install Tosca that allows you to call these different types of scripts. So I've set it up in the same way where we search for a customer, um, create the account request, for example. Um, and then of course create the response and but what I'll show you now is how that works if I say instead of actually automating according to the UI or API we just use this module that's available with Tosca you can see um, this module is actually available in the 8 pack and you can see it allows me to execute different in unit and day unit methods as well so we have the path to where the file is stored it could be a DLL or a jar it could be you can point to the actual class and the method of that you want to execute and also you can point to where the results want to be stored and that's what I'm utilizing in my um, methods library over here um, so the same way we've done it for UIs and APIs we can do the same thing 
So let me just close all these and go back to my overview. In general, this simple scenario with one technology is easy enough to do. But what happens when you need to scale enterprise-wide and go across multiple technologies? This is the tipping point we see for BDD projects, as you now need multiple tools and frameworks along with technical skills to maintain all of this. With Tosca, you are able to do end-to-end -end test automation across all technologies, all within one tool. For scenarios that require multiple data variants going through a particular flow, we can use Tosca's test case design section over here, if I open that up, as well as the test case templates over here. So here I've got an example of a UI automation template linked to my different data sheet over here. And in this example, we used the second one that we saw at the beginning. So we had the scenario with the different um, scenario outline with all the different data variants over here. So you can see over here we have a little table and these are all the different data combinations that we want to test. There's one successful and a whole bunch of failures over here that should um, occur when this data is entered. So what I'm going to do is add a new one and say, let's say we want to add a new one, for example, and we say we want to add a success criteria. And I can just say copy paste, enter that over there. But this time we're going to supply the credit rating of triple A. So he's got a much higher rating. Um, his credit rate, let's just make something up and give him, for example, 3.0. And again, we'll go for a debit rate. I'm again going to make this up and just say a number like six. Um, but in this case, we want it to be successful. And I'm just going to base that on my credit rating of AAA with my limited banking knowledge over here. So we can now add that into my actual um, data-driven tests. But before we add one, let's have a look and see what it looks like. Here, if we jump over here, you can see here's my data-driven sheet. And we have the same BDD scenario in the same Gherkin syntax as well. So given a client has all this particular rating, we have the whens and the thens and all the different data that goes with it. You'll see two sets of data because in Tosca we have logical and physical data according to your business rules. Um, I won't go into too much of all of that now, but all this data over here is driving my test cases. And if I jump to my template that's linked to it, you'll see we're utilizing the same um, templates that we've set up over here, the little libraries over here, and the same business parameters. But instead of actually having data in the libraries, we now read it straight from the data sheets. And this makes the maintenance a lot easier when you have large numbers of data variants, um, which is normally the case in more complex BDD projects. Um, so what you'll see over here is now instead of having the data here, it's got an Excel, which means it's just referencing the data in the data sheet. So based on all that data there, linked to my little existing libraries with my parameters, and Tosca creates these template, these test case, test cases in this template instance folder over here, based on all of that. So if I open up one of these, and let me just right click and expand one, you can see all my data is in there already, the same way it looked when we had already created our test case based on the libraries. But from a maintenance point of view, that's very important because we don't need to worry about any of this. If I wanted to add a new data variant, like we said we wanted to do, I can simply come over here. Let's copy an existing one, paste it over here, collapse this, and we're going to open up the last one that I copied and say, this time we want AAA. So we have AAA over there. And we can come and jump straight and I'll just edit the physical values over here and not worry about the logical ones up there. And I think I put a three over there and this might have been a six. So let's change that. And we want it to be successful, of course. We can also rename the scenario as well to say this time it's going to be AAA. And now that's all we need to do from that point of view. We, it's already all linked up to my template so I can come to my template instance folder here do an update, which is our reinstantiate button there, and Tosca will automatically create a new BDD test over here with my AAA rating. And again, I can right click, expand all, and we have, there's my rating. It's already parameterized automatically straight into my BDD UI library. And if I scroll down, you can see it's already fed straight into my test case to the automation piece, same as all the other parameters I entered and the values in the test case in the red section over there. So you can see, the maintenance going forward is really taken care of with Tosca. You don't have to worry about trying to build frameworks on top of scripting tools to try to take care of this in advance. And again, we're going across all technologies, not just um, a few selected ones from our point. Um, so I'm hope hopefully that demo was useful to you so you can see how Tosca is enabling our customers to do 
their BDD projects. Thanks for your time.